Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello all. Thank you for participating our webinar. Please welcome the Honorable Dean of Faculty Economic and Business Universitas Alangga, Mrs. Professor Dr. Dian Agustia, SAMSE AKCACMA. Our moderator today, the Honorable Mrs. Nadia Andri Do PhD. Our two speakers today, the Honorable Mr. Professor Wan Yi Hu, PhD from Nanhua University, Taiwan, and Mr. Iman Harimawan, PhD, Department of Accounting, Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Erlangga. And of course, all of the particip participants and invited guests. First of all, let's praise our God, Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the creator and sustainer of the universe. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vina Kusma Andriani. It is an awesome and precious chance for me to be your MC in this morning on Thursday, 24th September 2020 in our event, the Accounting Department's International Webinar Series, Knowledge Sharing in International Research Collaboration. Uh, before we start the webinar, I want to share some facts about our department. Accounting Department, Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Erlangga, aims to be a world-class department. Therefore, it has a high commitment to firstly, increase our quality in education by getting some accreditation by BANPT, ABEST21, CIMA, ICAEW, and certificated by AUN. Secondly, to enhance our capability in research field, accounting department held several research trainings and webinars nationally and internationally, such as our webinar today with the topic of knowledge sharing in international research collaboration. For our first agenda, ladies and gentlemen, let's start with singing Indonesia Raya and Hymna Arlangga. Please start. Indonesia
Thank you. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, next on to the following agenda. We have welcoming speech from Mrs. Professor D Dr. Dian Agustia, SAMSE AKCACMA, as the Dean Faculty of Economic and Business Universitas Erlangga. Mrs. Dian, the time is yours. Thank you, Vina. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Praise be to Allah God Almighty, who for His grace the preparation for accounting department international webinar series, knowledge sharing in international research collaboration run smoothly. On behalf of the organizer, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for your participation in this webinar. I would like, uh, <coughs> sorry, I would also like to convey my gratitude to our honor speaker, uh, Prof. Wan Yi Wu from Nanhua University. Hello, Prof. Wan. Yes. Yeah, thank uh, you so much you. for uh, joining with uh, some webinar international in Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Erlangga Accounting Department. Uh, Prof. Wan Yi Wu from Nanhua University, Taiwan, and Speaker uh, Prof. Iman Harimawan, PhD, from Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Erlangga, and Nadia Arindo, Sarjana Akuntansi, MBA, PhD, as moderator. I hope all of you have abundant opportunity to discuss knowledge sharing in international research collaboration topic in this webinar. I am confident that we individually and collectively will gain valuable lesson. I hope your discussion will be both productive and enjoyable. Thank you, Dean of Faculty Economic and Business Universitas Erlangga. I am Dian Agustia. Thank you so much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam Thank you, Professor Dian. What an enlightening speech. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we will start our session on the Accounting Department's International Webinar Series by the theme Knowledge Sharing in International Research Collaborations. Today, we will be accompanied by our lecturer. She is an assistant professor at Accounting Department, Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Erlangga. She got her PhD degree from Chinese Culture University in Taiwan. Her research interests are involving in subjects such as information system, corporate governance, strategic management, and all things related to innovation. Without any further ado, we would like to welcome on stage Mrs. Nadia Andrido as our moderator today. Please give applause and Mrs. Nadia, the time is yours. Okay, thank you Fina, for your opening. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Uh, to our honorable dean, Professor Diana Christia, thank you for the opportunity for us to have this webinar and invited to excellent speakers today. Our Mr. Harim, Iman Harimawan, PhD. Good morning, Pak Iman. Good morning, Nadia. Speaker, second speaker, this is the excellent professor in Taiwan. Not only Taiwan, I think, so worldwide. Many people also know him. Good morning, Professor Wan Yi Wu. Yeah, good morning. Dr. How Mantia. are you? Fine. Thank Fine. you. Okay. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Lao Tzu. Usually I call him Lao Tzu because actually he is uh, my supervisor, my advisor when I'm doing all both the uh, master and PhD degree. Okay, so good morning to all the participants. Thank you for coming to this webinar. So I hope that today we can get some insight from our speakers about how they conduct the research collaboration, especially in international research collaboration. So later on in the last session of this webinar, you can ask any questions to them. I think they are very welcome to answer all your questions. So let's start to our first speaker. Our first speaker will be Mr. Iman Harimawan, PhD. Okay, can you help me to show 
CV please. Okay, Mr. Iman Harimawan, SA MBA PhD, is a lecturer in the Department of Accounting, Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Erlangga. He obtained his PhD degree in accounting from City University of Hong Kong and MBA degree in, from National Chengkong University in Taiwan. I think also at that time, Professor Wu was there. And then he got his bachelor from accounting department, Universitas Erlangga in Indonesia. As you can see in this PPT, he has uh, a lot of experience about research. See, he has this publication number, 59 publication and 18 speakers of scientists, scientific seminar, intellectual property and others. So I think we will get very good information from him about this international research collaboration. Okay, let's start to Mr. Iman. The screen is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Nadia. Uh, and uh, before I start, could you please uh, give me access to share my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. Let me start. Just want to double check. Can you see my screen on the PPT slide now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to start with uh, Salam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Very good morning, everyone. Um, uh, thank you for the Dean of Faculty of Economics and Business Universitas Erlangga for having me uh, to this uh, excellent event. And uh, my uh, Lausa as well, uh, Professor Wan Yu. Thanks a lot for the experience and also the uh, support. Yeah, uh, during my time at NCKU, it was a very wonderful time. Really miss Tainan so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, uh, after COVID nineteen, yeah, we can. I mean, uh, we can have a trip to visit you in Taiwan in Nanhua. Yeah, and. Um, Good morning for uh, all participants. It's a great honor for me to have a time uh, to share some of my knowledge yeah, uh, about how to initiate a research collaboration. So I will more discuss about the technical part. Uh, I think uh, uh, Professor Wan Yu will share many um, uh, strategic things about how to develop research collaboration later on. Yeah. Um, just a quick recap. Yeah, I, as I mentioned by uh, uh, Dr. Nedia, I got my um, bachelor degree from Erlanga in 2006, and I it's uh, a pleasure for me to have a uh, degree from National Chengkung University in 2009. And uh, from NCKU, I can go to City University of Hong Kong. Yeah, um, it's uh, actually I learned a lot of research uh, starting from my uh, bachelor degree and also one of my stepping stone from the NCKU. And um, I also meet with uh, many uh, top scholars and NCKU and also City University of Hong Kong. Yeah, this is my baseline performance. So before I share my, uh, 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 how to initiate the collaborations, I started my uh, publication in 2016. Yeah, uh, uh, when I, uh, at the end of my PhD programs, yeah. At that time, I published two papers. One in Australian Journal of Management, that a a journal in ABDC, yeah, Australian Business Dean Council, and also another one is in International Journal of Accounting and Information Management. Yeah, it's a very uh, interesting experience because when I started that papers, uh, actually. Uh, it's my first international collaboration paper, and I met with my co-author in football pitch. Yeah, so when uh, the break time after we play soccer together, and then in during the break time we discuss a uh, few things and we come up with some idea of research. Yeah, that's uh, that's my first uh, international collaboration. So yeah, my first suggestion maybe you can uh, play sport. Yeah, maybe you can find your <laughs> collaborators over there. Yeah, um, 
this is my baseline uh, uh, performance. And one thing that come up into my mind uh, when I starting my career is uh, I have a belief that I need to find my mentor. Yeah, why? Because uh, when you want to uh, uh, stepping your career uh, in a very good shape, I think uh, you need to find a role model who can help you, who can uh, assist you, who can support you, who can motivate you, who can help you to answer many questions. Yeah, that's the things that I think uh, is a good way to have a mentor. But uh, not everyone would 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 like to become your mentor. Yeah. So, but uh, keep going because you you um, you need your mentor. But maybe your mentor doesn't need you. Yeah. So uh, keep going, keep trying to find your mentor. And I end up with uh, uh, this one, uh, several things that I think I can learn from my mentor. It's about leadership as well. Yeah, uh, leadership, it's very important in managing uh, uh, quality and quantity of works. Yeah, if you have one paper, maybe it's okay. You can do by your own. But if you have a lot of papers, you need a leadership as well. You need to uh, know how you, how to lead your team in working on uh, very uh, diverse uh, papers and very, um, uh, I mean, the quantity is also uh, high. So it's important for you to learn leadership from your mentor. And you can get inspiration from your mentor. Yeah, you, you know how to, uh, how they set up a networking, you know how they maintain a networking. Set up a networking is difficult, but it's, uh, maintaining the networking is more difficult yeah so uh you learn how they got success yeah i mean uh they uh, uh you can learn from they fail as well yeah they fail as well and then uh you can get networking to improve your skills yeah to get the network in uh, to attend some important workshop and also uh many other things yeah they can motivate you as well so it is important to have a good mentor yeah so uh, I come up to find my first mentor. Is uh, his name is Ferdinand Gul. Yeah, he is from uh, Deakin University. He is his profile. He has ninety four uh, uh, articles in Scopus and excuse me, uh, about more than five thousand uh, citation. Yeah, um, it's happened to me to met with him with him in I think in two thousand back in two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Uh, at that time in Hong Kong, you know, Hong Kong is not a big place. Yeah, you can move from one university. It's very easy because the transportation is very, uh, as, uh, is well established. Yeah. And when you, uh, in Hong Kong, uh, you can visit uh, many uh, internal seminar uh, uh, within the university. You, uh, for example, I'm from the University of Hong Kong. I can come to uh, attend uh, seminar in Polytechnic University, uh, University of Hong Kong, Chinese U, and Lignan University, and other university, and it's for free. Yeah, because they are well connected. And I think in 2000, back in 2014, I attended one uh, seminar. Uh, it's presented by one professor at PolyU and also co-author with Ferdinand Gul. At that time, Ferdinand Gul is, was in uh, Monash, Malaysia, and then I came to that uh, seminar. I I listened to the seminar and then I talked uh, with uh, Ferdinand Gul. Yeah, yeah. I introduced myself. Yeah, that's the first thing that I always do when I want to know with someone. I come. I just approach him and uh, introduce uh, briefly. Introduce myself. Uh, normally, uh, previously I said that yeah, I'm. I got my master from Taiwan and I'm pursuing my. PhD at CTU and I'm from Indonesia and when uh, uh, because we don't know which part of our introduction that uh, will uh, 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 will attract uh, his attention and finally when I introduced from Indonesia is very interesting because he said that uh, uh, Indonesia has a potential to uh, grow in the next 20 or 25 years and starting from that uh, meeting, uh, we uh, we keep in touch, yeah. And then my second mentor is uh, Professor Kim Jong Boon. Kim Jong Boon is the head of department from the accounting department at the University of Hong Kong, and I learned a lot from him. Yeah, uh, he he pub uh, he published a lot of papers as well. 
104 and he uh, well cited paper for 1500 something papers yeah and at uh uh to be fair he was one he, he's one of the best lecturers that i've attended his lectures yeah mm. uh it's very uh very simple in uh, mm. delivering the knowledge and uh, uh share many wisdom about life as well yeah um okay that's the first thing uh, we need to find a good mentor uh because uh we can start our network from uh, our mentor as well and the second one is dashboard because uh, collaborating is not only about uh, uh, initiating, but also maintaining. Yeah, so we need to have a, a research fund as well. I I believe Professor Wu has a lot of uh, 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 has received a lot of research grant. Yeah, uh, Nadia also benefit from that one. I think. <laughs> I mean, uh, he learned a lot. She learned a lot from how uh, Professor Wu working with the research project. Yeah. And also research roadmap and initiative because we can uh, start to discuss with someone that we are interested to work in. Uh, we can um, we can share about our uh, research initiative. Yeah, and third one research networks. Yeah, uh, I will talk in detail later on. And also database. Um, um, one of my strategy because I'm working with secondary data is uh, I'm developing my uh, uh, data set with my research assistant. Yeah, so because uh, with a unique data set, we can attract many uh, top scholars to work with us. Yeah, maybe we don't have any, uh, uh, I mean, big research grant, but if we have a unique data that could inter, uh, I mean, uh, attract the interest of the co-authors from. Uh, I've heard one story about uh, one big professor from US and uh, he decided to move to Europe not because of the salary increase, but uh, because of one university in Europe, they have a set of unique data set, which uh, are very interesting. Yeah, so uh, he decided to join with that university. And number five is research assistant. Yeah, I learned to have research assistant when I started uh, taking my master in uh, NCKU. Yeah, I, I appointed as research assistant as well at the time and also the teaching assistant. So. This is a very good uh, culture to have a research assistant and it will boost the productivity of the research for the university and also the individual uh, uh, career. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, excuse me, Unadia, how, how long did I have? Uh, I mean, the, the time for the presentation. And 30 minutes? Uh, 40 to 45 minutes. Or okay. Around yeah, okay. So it should be nine. Yes. 40, 940 or 945. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, initiating collaborations. Yeah, there are two ways I think we can start developing a new network or we enter the existing network. Yeah, so this is the first step, uh, the first thing that I want to share. We can develop uh, a new network. Yeah, so when we uh, enter the master or PhD program, normally we assign one supervisor. Yeah. And um, that's also one possibility for you to have uh, research collaborations. Yeah, this is uh, Chang Xiaoqi, is a good friend of Professor Wu. He was my supervisor. Yeah, uh, he got his uh, bachelor degree in nuclear engineering, I think, and master and PhD from the finance. Yeah, um, yeah, um, maybe if you don't have a good, I mean, if, if you cannot set up a collaboration with the, your supervisor, maybe because of your research interest later on is uh, different, uh, you can use their network to uh, start uh, doing the, what is that, the collaborations. And finally, I come up to know uh, Associate Professor Meng Feng Yin. Yeah, uh, he's, uh, I think, yeah. Uh, um, he's a good friend of my supervisor uh, from uh, Chang Saoji, and now I'm uh, starting uh, discussing uh, with him something that maybe uh, later on uh, uh, will come up in a good uh, journals. Yeah, yeah, that's the second thing. Yeah, you can make use of the network of your supervisor as well, and also the last one is Professor uh, Chongyi. Uh, Chongyi is my uh, 
supervisor and PhD program at City University of Hong Kong. Yeah, uh, we uh, after I finished my PhD, I have slightly different research interests with him, but I get to know many people from him. Yeah, uh, so it's very important to uh, what is that to have uh, collaboration to so start a networking with the supervisor. Yeah, the second one is the visiting scholars. When I was at CTU, uh, almost every two weeks, almost every two weeks, uh, we have uh, visiting scholars. Yeah, uh, we have Catherine Sieper, if you know him, you know her. Uh, she, was, uh, she, she was a member of IASB, International Accounting Standard Board, from I think from UT Dallas. Yeah, uh, if I remember correctly, yeah, he's from uh, one university in U.S. and also um, James Olson, yeah, and Clive Lennox and many uh, uh, famous or many top scholars uh, coming to CTU to present their papers. And also, uh, we have a regular we have a regular uh, meeting uh, for the uh, we call it job market paper, yeah. So every January, I think January, December, January, and February, uh, uh, CTU inviting uh, uh, shortlisted applicant for uh, to, to working at CTU uh, to present the papers. Yeah, from Singapore, Hong Kong, US, Europe, Australia, they come to CTU to present their papers. Yeah, that's also uh, uh, a good uh, good opportunity to know him and also to have uh, starting collaboration with them. And also uh, CTU has, uh, I think in, uh, in more A, uh, I think in many countries, yeah, normally we also treat our guests well. Yeah. So after presentation, normally we, uh, uh, we ask them to join for the lunch. Yeah. Uh, at CTU, normally we have a private lunch. Yeah, private lunch, it means that only four or five persons uh, entertain them, uh, the speakers, and then we have a close discussions. That's also a very good uh, culture that uh, I, I learned a lot and I got uh, many uh, networking from that uh, event as well. Yeah, uh, last one is our peers. Yeah, our peers, we can collaborate with our friends at uh, master degree or also PhD degree. Yeah, yeah, I have some collaboration with my friend on PhD degree. Yeah, that's also a good, uh, a good thing uh, to start, yeah. And then uh, the second thing is uh, you can uh, start, you can find your collaborators from social media platform. Yeah, I think ResearchKit is uh, more popular in the last three to five years, yeah. You can ask technical questions there, here, yeah. Uh, let me, let's a pointer, yeah, here. You can ask technical question there or you can start a discussion as well. Yeah, and then uh, after you post, you can uh, get the feedback from others. Yeah, um, you can uh, categorize questions that you, uh, you think you can answer. Yeah, questions that you follow as, or questions you ask, you can, you can monitor uh, everything. Yeah, over there. Yeah, it's very, uh, very interesting platform. Yeah, especially for researchers. Yeah, uh, but the challenge is that you need to know the detail of the uh, potential collaborators that you have because uh, later on I will discuss the collaborator is not always ending with happy uh, happy ending. Yeah, yeah, and it with happy ending. Yeah, and then let me continue. Yeah, what is the first thing that you do? Yeah, you need to study their background. Yeah. For example, this is one of my co-author. Uh, he is in uh, U.S. now, Illinois State University. Illinois State University, and uh, I published, I think, about six papers with him, and we have about two or three incoming papers now. Uh, yeah, one thing that you can do is that uh, we learn their background from the website. Yeah. Uh, look at their. Sometimes they have. Uh, they also disclose some the their uh, interests. Yeah, and if you have uh, something that uh, common interest, you can start the discussion from that as well. Yeah, and also you can look at from the LinkedIn uh, website web page. Yeah, you can look at their uh, ability because uh, in LinkedIn web page, uh, 
Uh, you can see there, uh, what is that there? Uh, their ability, yeah? Yeah, you can discuss maybe they advance in Stata, blockchain or other things. Yeah, you can start the discussion from that as well. Yeah, and after you study their background, you need to study their research profile. Yeah, you can look at Google Scholar, Research Kit, or Scopus, yeah, you can look at their uh, papers. Yeah, you can look at their uh, uh, research uh, profile, research interest. Yeah, I think that's a good way to uh, start uh, with collaboration because uh, you have an idea and many people outside there also have similar idea with you. You just need to link between your idea and also your uh, 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 their idea. And now we have uh, many platform to uh, bridge, yeah, to become the bridge of, of our idea. Yeah, and the second one is entering an existing network. Yeah, um, my previous, uh, my university when I got my PhD, CTU has own one journal, they call it China Journal of Accounting Research. Yeah, uh, it's a Scopus Index Journal and also uh, I think ESCI. Yeah, it's also ranked in ABDC, Australian Business Dean Council. Yeah, um, if you aim to publish in top tier journal, maybe this is not the correct journal because this is, I think, the second tier journal. Yeah, if you want to publish in first tier journal, uh, this can be your vehicle to find your uh, collaborators. Yeah, because uh, when you know the editor in chief, uh, this is the one of my mentor, Professor Kim Jong Boon. Yeah. Uh, uh, he can introduce you to many people. Yeah, I think uh, Prof. Wu has also many network, and I think uh, Prof. Badri yeah, also uh, benefit a lot of network from Prof. Wu. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and yeah, if you attend their conference, if you uh, attend their seminars, yeah, somehow you you will meet with someone that. Uh, maybe have the same uh, interest with you. So you can start the discussion from that. Yeah, it's already established network. If you look at the, uh, what is that, the um, uh, publication, out, uh, the author of the publication, normally they, they link one to each other. For, for example, Professor A, he published with Professor B, C, D, and Professor B, C, D has uh, some students, and then <coughs> somehow, uh, two years later, a student of Professor B will uh, pu will publish with Professor A. Yeah, and yeah, that's uh, already established networking. So it's a good way as well to start with uh, entering uh, established networking. And another, this is I'm I'm taking some Asian journals because it's uh, I think it would be uh, close to our interest. Yeah, rather than uh, non-Asian journals. And the second one is Journal of Contemporary Accounting and Economics. Yeah, this is a SSCI journal. Yeah, and uh, the co-editors they have um, they call it Journal of Account Journal of Contemporary Accounting and Economics Symposium. They uh, they held it twice a year. Uh, the first one, uh, uh, one of the symposium, uh, it's held in Asian countries. And the second one is in Australia. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. And then um, I regularly attend this conference, yeah, uh, Journal of Account Contemporary Accounting and Economics. And I think I found about five to six new co authors, and I'm, we are working with uh, uh, many people from this conference. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, the. Another things that uh, we can do, yeah. And how to start? Yeah, I think everyone knows that we need to have a structured idea before we share with others. Yeah, if we don't have a structured idea, it will. Um, uh, I mean, um, our co-author is also busy person. Yeah, they if they spend some time to read our email, that's a very good, uh, uh, very good for us. Yeah, so uh, make use of it. Yeah, uh, so don't waste their time. So we need to have a structured idea, prepare our pitching. Yeah, you can look at the pitching from Robert Pfaff or you can use any type of outline. 
yeah, normally I use a simple outline, two or three pages outline idea and I share to them and ask their uh, comments or uh, ask their uh, whether they would like to join as the co-author or not. Yeah. And then after that, you can send them an email or you get a reference or recommendation from others uh, person or from your supervisor or from your friend, from your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is some of the examples. Maybe I can share you one thing. This is uh, when um, John is one of my friend and I, this is an example of the email. So I would like to explore about the bot meeting uh, using Indonesian data. And then I know that uh, he's expert in corporate governance and I share with him that uh, I have a set of unique data. Yeah, so uh, if um, we, in this email, I only discuss about the data. Yeah, uh, whether uh, he think that this data is unique or not. So I, I, will, I, mean, I mean, I can uh, listen, I can hear from him. And then if it's interesting and then we can start doing uh, what, uh, what is the possible uh, research idea that we can generate from this data? Yeah, yeah. We can start with the idea first, or we can start with the data first. Yeah, but based on my experience, uh, using secondary data, if we have a unique data, is a very powerful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then another example is yeah. This one is yeah. Um, I. I think this one is 2016. Yeah, I met with him, uh, Professor Gul, in 2014, as I mentioned before. Yeah, uh, I start to develop a networking by uh, uh, connecting the uh, event from for both university, Deakin University, and also Erlang Universitas Erlangga, Erlangga University. And then I start to discuss with him about the possibility for Erlangga to become the host for the conference, and then. Later on, we, we discuss many things about research as well. Yeah. Uh, another thing is that we can start with the research grant collaborations. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think every uh, faculty member, every professor, they will have a, they will get the benefit when they got the uh, research grant. I mean, it's not in terms of the uh, financial, but in terms of the uh, uh, what is that the research uh, the profile. Yeah, they can mention in their CV that they got they received research grant from uh, Indonesia. And as we know, we we are lucky to stay in Indonesia because we we uh, Indonesian government uh, provide a lot of opportunity for us to access the research grant. So it's, um, yeah, it's alhamdulillah, it's, uh, we are lucky to uh, live in Indonesia. So we can make of use of that uh, facility, that policy, because we don't know next year or five years later, uh, gover Indonesian government will stay with that policy or they flip the coin, they change their uh, decision and start uh, limiting the research and uh, research grant, we don't know. So uh, since we have this opportunity, I think it's a good for us to, uh, uh, maximizing this opportunity. So we can uh, get uh, funding, we can start the discussion by uh, let them know that we have uh, opportunity to get the research fund, yeah. And we can explore if we know him very well and we have a good collaboration, we can uh, ask for is it possible to have matching fund because we also get the credit if we get, uh, can attract research, uh, from, for research fund from uh, overseas. Yeah, and we can also access the uh, research grant from the national, uh, from the uh, Ministry of Education. Yeah, there are several uh, or other in the institution, Bank Indonesia and LPDP. Yeah. Or we can also uh, try to get a uh, international fund. Yeah, from many, yeah, uh, many institutions. And now I'm applying one research grant with Dr. Nadia in SIMA uh, research grant with also also with Professor uh, Diana Agustia. Yeah, um, maintaining a network is more challenging than develop a network. Yeah, developing is quite difficult, but maintaining is more difficult. Yeah, it's uh, challenging. I, I, I would like to share one article from the conversations, yeah, before setting up the 
collaborations, make sure that we really need the collab to collaborate because sometimes we don't really need to collaborate. Yeah, but collaboration is uh, very important things. Yeah, uh, I understand that the collaboration is risky. Yeah, if you see that uh, maybe I think Professor Wu can talk um, many things about. Yeah, it's not always uh, collaboration is not always <laughs> ended with the good things. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, be a professional, yeah, and find the right partners, yeah, um, yeah. We have to try, even though we don't uh, find a right partners now. But once you get the right partners, it's very, uh, uh, very useful for us. Yeah, leverage your existing relationship. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that I, I I used to do last year, I visited several countries. I stay in Australia maybe about three weeks. I stay in UK for two weeks and also US for two weeks and some other countries. Uh, because uh, using the research grant, I, I have a chance to visit their, um, what is that, their uh, university, my partner's university. Yeah, when I visit them, I, I always discuss with them about uh, is it possible for you to share about the data set that you subscribe and then we can explore the possibility of doing research together because you know uh, university in indonesia we uh, we less likely subscribe the data set yeah but we give a lot of research grant yeah but for other countries uh, normally they don't provide a huge research grant but they help the uh, lecturer or the professor by subscribing the data set so we can uh, fill the i mean fill the gap for each university. Yeah, we can collaborate that one as well. And the last one is find common ground with the other parties. Yeah, this is additional, I think. Yeah, we can, uh, I mean, we can increase the quality of the relationship by, uh, yeah, uh, dis discussing one things that uh, we have the same interest, but uh, it's not mandatory. Yeah. Yeah, um, how to manage the network? I'm using a project management software. I'm using ClickUp, yeah, uh, you can, there are many types of uh, project management software, Asana, Basecamp, Trellos. I'm not the marketing of one of these products, but I'm, 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 I'm just going to share to you that it's really helpful for us to manage many projects, yeah. Or even though you have only one, two, three, four, five projects, and if you use project management software, it will help you to remind you about the progress, to uh, remind you about the deadline and many other things, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you can, uh, you can, what is that? You can, uh, you can link your other platform with the product management software. And this is one of the example. I think at the moment I have about 50, I think 60 projects. Yeah, 50 projects together with my students, my collaborators, my friends. And um, yeah, and I divided into several steps. Uh, this is the pitching. Uh, pitching research is still uh, gathering the idea, and seven project is starting data collections. Thirteen project is uh, starting data analysis, and now I'm writing about twenty-two papers. Yeah, uh, uh, by using this one, I think it's uh, easy for. Uh, it's not easy. It's it will helpful. Uh, yeah, if we have a, a project management software, we can uh, check the progress and also we can check uh, what do we need to do in order to uh, finalize the product uh, the projects yeah and this is one of the sample yeah uh, i have one uh, papers uh, innovation intensity of military connected firms in indonesia my target journal is british accounting review is a star journal in abdc and accounting and finance in from australia yeah this is my target journal and i know if i'm writing this paper i need to find someone who has ability maybe to help you to publish in this journal. Either they already have experience publishing in this journal or they have many other things that, uh, I mean, we can collaborate with. Yeah. And also, uh, this is uh, the step pitching research. This is the time for me to find collaborators. Uh, um, am I really need uh, collaborators? And if I need collaborators, who is the best, uh, uh, what is the skills that I need from them? And how how do I uh, I mean how do I approach them, and then uh, I start my data collections. After I well finalize my pitching, I find the collaborators, 
and then usually I start my data collection and until review and revise. Yeah, yeah. How long it depends. Really depends on. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. So because publication is not is a journey, so the, we need to enjoy. Yeah. And the progress result. Uh, um, 2016, I published two papers. And 2020, now I published about 40 papers. I know this is still in a quality, not, uh, sorry, quantity. I need to improve my quality. Yeah, my citation is not that uh, high uh, comparing to many scholars. Yeah, so, but I think uh, having a good track is uh, important. So if we have a good track, we have a good uh, culture, I think we need to improve it. Yeah, um, at the moment I have about 39% of my projects uh, doing international collaborations. Yeah, uh, this is, I got the, this data from Skyfall. Yeah, and this is my partner. Um, uh, I got many citations from my collaborations with the uh, Illinois State University and some other university. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we, yeah, yeah. I think I can skip this one. And this is my research area. I'm a lot doing on audit fee and also audit uh, issue and also doing a political connection issue and now I'm uh, starting doing about the uh, sustainability issue yeah sustainability reporting that's the three areas that I'm working on uh, audit uh, political connection and also uh, environmental yeah so I still have one minute left yeah okay yeah I can skip this one uh, I can skip this one as well yeah quality is quantity yeah yeah, um, yeah. If we look at, uh, if we focus on quality, it's um, yeah. The threat of is the quantity. Yeah, if we focus on the quantity, the threat of is the quality. Yeah. So, um, I'm still um, uh, young scholars. I'm still in uh, new scholars. So I need, I still need to find a balance between the quantity and the quality. Yeah. Somehow, uh, yeah, um, I'm learning from many scholars as well. Yeah, that's my presentation. I think. Thank you uh, for uh, listening my presentations. Uh, I'll give it back to uh, the moderator. Thank you, Radia. Thank you, Dr. Iman, for the excellent speaks today. And we get several insights from him. So in doing the research collaboration, what the most important thing is you need to develop your network. But remember the tech mark from him, maintaining a network is more challenging than developing a network. So now if you haven't had any network yet, start to develop your network and later you need to maintain it well. Thank you, Dr. Iman. And for the participant, if you want to ask the question, you can start asking your questions from the chat with the template that the uh, committee give to you. And now let's start to the second excellent speaker for today. This is Professor Wan Yiwu. Can you help me to share the CV of Professor Wang Yi Wu, please? And Professor Wang Yi Wu is a Chair Professor of Marketing in the Department of Business Administration at Hawaii University. He obtained his PhD degree in Marketing from Oklahoma State University, USA, and also MBA degree from Donghei University in Taiwan, and MBA degree from National Kaohsiung Normal University in Taiwan. So I think, he has so many publication and the citation is also quite high. And I think today he will share about his excellent experience for us today. Okay, Professor Wang Yu, please yes. let's start your speak and the screen is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, can you see the screen? of my PPT? Yes, yes, you can see your screen. Okay, I'm very uh, honored to share my experience of collaboration today. Especially, I'm very impressive uh, to listen to the performance of uh, Professor Iman. Um, before I speak, can I have some comments on this, uh, uh, a few comments, and also this also the my feeling about collaboration. Yeah, um, please, bro. First of all, um, I want to congratulate Professor Iman to uh, continue your effort on research. 
because uh, after we go back to our university, normally we need to do a lot of administration work. And then to go along with prominent members and go a lot of social uh, things, for example, relatives uh, and so on and so forth. So a lot of people try to give up such a lonely research work. Not, uh, this is my experience. And also, um, for example, in Taiwan, uh, if you need to get resources, you had better become a, a dean or department head. Because once you get administrative dis uh, position, you get uh, more resource and you get more well-known uh, countrywide. And therefore, for me, I have no choice, but first of all, try to get the position so that I become well-known, I get more uh, research funding, and then I can, uh, uh, I can hire some uh, students to uh, do a, as a team. So uh, uh, up, about four years after my professor, uh, she, I become the department head for about six years. And then I become um, some of the directors for in centers and also the dean for another six years and the professor. And also I suddenly become the president of Chinese Culture University. Therefore, um, uh, for a person who is in charge of administration, it is very difficult to do research simultaneously. On the other hand, a pure research professor still have a lot of teaching and also an administrative work. So to continue the research is actually not easy. And then uh, to do more collaboration is also even more difficult. Therefore, I want to uh, say uh, congratulations for Dr. Iman that you doing quite good. And then uh, also not only quality, but also the quantity of the paper. So congratulations. Thank you, Professor Wu. So today I um, would like to uh, uh, present uh, my career because I seem to be more senior. So I'm uh, trying to show you that uh, in the beginning of my career, I was graduated as a major in uh, mechanical engineering as a university uh, undergraduate major. Therefore, I would like to become an engineer. Our managers, our the president of the company, However, uh, after I work uh, about two years in Formosa Plastic, I transferred to China Steel for another 15 years. But by, by a, a very sudden change, chance, I got a full scholarship uh, from the government to study my PhD in uh, Oklahoma State University in United States. This is very, um, a sudden case that uh, suddenly I got this uh, money. So I feel that if I don't go, I will regret it some year later. Therefore, I just go to study my PhD by the year of 19, uh, uh, 1987. So for four years, I also trained by my professor a lot because in the US system is quite a little bit different uh, from Australia or from UK system. They need to take a lot of coursework and take qualified exam and then take uh, make sure that you understand the research and start your uh, thesis. Therefore, um, based on my knowledge that I have more than 15 years of working experience in the enterprise and also I learned some theoretical concept from Oklahoma University I seem to be uh, become more creative uh, when I go back to Chenggong University. 
and then I try to um, uh, work and, and also leave. And then by the year of 2010, I was assigned as the president of Chinese Council University. As a side story, when I was the dean in National Qinggong University, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Badali actually worked with me for about five years to take his uh, master and PhD degree. And he also, uh, as my student, my TA, and also my partner, I, I think uh, Dr. Iman knows that we always uh, have very close uh, working together. At the time, I request Dr. Badali to recruit some students again to Qinggong University from Erlanga. And this student include Dr. Nadia and also Dr. Obin. But suddenly I become the president of Chinese Cultural University. So I recruit this student then go to Chinese Cultural University uh, for Dr. Nadia. Maybe you don't know. And then um, I was the president. So that in the daytime, I'm very busy. So I can meet these students on night time and try to supervise them and try to work very closely and they take care of a lot of administration work. For example, I'm in meeting, they need to teach for me. I'm, a, I'm busy, they, they become the TA. My data is still there, they need to uh, do the data analysis and come to me and then um, it's a busy but very happy work. After that, I stepped down from the president from Chinese Cultural University. I become uh, the vice president of Nanhua University until today. And it is also a very uh, happy days that I, uh, you know, there is a difference between president and vice president. President is the one to take care of all the responsibilities and vice president is the one to help the president. So uh, uh, to the responsibility, uh, president much more challenging. Uh, just give you some idea uh, on my career. I worked about two years in uh, a company called Formosa Plastic. And this is a, a biggest uh, uh, company in Taiwan, major in chemical product and major in plastics. They're all doing well. The, the company are doing a cost leadership strategy and request that their product should be 30% lower than their uh, competitor's product. And then this company actually do not have uh, many marketing activities. They try to focus on cost. When the cost is down, then no need to do marketing because the, the, the customer will come uh, by themselves. They're looking on the price, they will come to us. On the other hand, then I go to another university, called, another company called Chinese called uh, China Steel Corporation. Uh, this company are more uh, steel making. Um, when I uh, work in this company, um, I also cooperate with Calcutta, Calcutta uh, 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 and Chirigong. And uh, I also Kalakatao visit- Steel. Huh? Kalakatao Steel. Kalakatao Steel. Kalakatao Steel. Uh, and then uh, both companies are very technology oriented. They need to do a lot of research in order to uh, develop new product and, and make a better price. So I learned, um, According to Porter, it's course leadership and differentiation, right? So I learned both. I stay in China Steel Corporation for about 15 years, and then I go to take my PhD. And this one is the Qinggong University, Dr. Iman already said. This one also very good university, now ranking about 200 uh, in research excellence. And then, um, the size of the university is about uh, uh, two, 25,000 students uh, with 2,000 faculty members, something like that. 
and they are very uh, research oriented and then uh, research team collaboration and so on and so forth. So in this university, I studied with my professor, uh, associate professor, professor and also a, a, a chair professor until the year of uh, 2010, I go to Taipei. And then I learned a lot uh, about collaboration from this university also. And then uh, by a very special case, I was uh, assigned to uh, go to Chinese Culture University. Uh, this university is more teaching uh, excellent oriented. And then, um, for example, QS ranking now, now the ranking in Asian is about uh, 300, something like that. And then uh, this university is also big. The student size is also about um, uh, 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 28,000, something like that. And then uh, faculty members is, is about uh, 750. And then they're still doing very well and also very beautiful campus. Now I am uh, 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 serving as a vice president of Lanhua University. Uh, I want to tell you a story. This uh, Nanhua University uh, is supported by a Buddhist foundation called Fuguang San in Taiwan. It's the biggest uh, affiliation in Taiwan. And then the founder, Master Xingyun, is very smart. He uh, asked the followers to pay $3 per month. Uh, to support this university. And, and three dollars is actually not a big number, right? But he asked uh, one million, one million worshippers, one million followers. So one million per three dollars per month, the money become big. So suddenly uh, one million people follow him and pay the money and then this uh, university start. So Lanhua is now um, uh, uh, set up by the year of 1996. And then uh, right now, uh, the university has about, uh, uh, as I say, uh, 1 million follow, uh, worshippers. And then uh, only $3 per month. So um, this money, uh, I then uh, try to support Nanhua University in uh, not only uh, the student tuition, but also from this uh, money. The current uh, student size of Nanhua is about 6,000 and about uh, 400 faculty members and employees. And Nanhua now have uh, five colleges a 21 undergraduate program and 24 master program and two PhD program. And Anwa is also a corroborate because the money become bigger and bigger. So Fu Guang San, uh, Master Xingyin decided to uh, set up a few more universities using this money, including the University of West uh, in the United States uh, Nanten University in Australia, uh, in uh, Sydney, Wollongong, and uh, 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 Guangming University in Manila, and another Fuguang University in Taipei. So five universities become a consortium that the student can uh, take uh, more easily. For example, we have two plus two program uh, with uh, University of the West, uh, some students take two years in uh, Taiwan and then uh, go to United States to take another two years. And then they can get a master, uh, they can get undergraduate degree for both universities. We also have some, uh, for example, uh, short-term English program with Nantian University. So the student go to Nantian uh, in the summer time. And then, um, because the Philippine people are very good in dancing and singing. 
So our uh, music department have very good cooperation with uh, Wang Ming uh, from Philippines, some exchange student, two degree program, and so on and so forth. So this also uh, make the university more uh, uh, collaborations uh, in terms of teaching, uh, co curriculum collaboration, and so on and so forth. So now I have uh, some of the achievements that I made. For example, most influ influential private university in Taiwan. We have uh, we have a uh, very emphasized on three virtual good, three virtue, uh, say good words, uh, do good deeds, and think good thought. These are the principal uh, so-called Sanhao campus, three uh, virtual campus. And then uh, actually we are doing a lot of activity related to uh, moral education in this university. We are, we, are we are get some awards, for example, National Quality Award and also um, sustain Sustainability Development Award and so on and so forth. And this is a campus of Nanhua. Take a look, uh, a very beautiful campus. We are now uh, uh, also applying AACSB, but in Taiwan we have a so-called Chinese, uh, uh, associate of Chinese uh, college uh, school uh, of business accreditation. So we already get uh, this certificate uh, for, uh, uh, for four years, and then next four years also acquire this uh, and currently, we already apply for AACSB and try to uh, maybe uh, try to uh, get accreditation from AACSB for another five years. So uh, talking about collaborations, I think uh, Dr. Iman already talked a lot. And then uh, maybe Dr. Iman is, is more on the perspective of a scholar, how to uh, collaborate with uh, peers with professors and also with other organizations. Um, my point of view is from university point of view, uh, how to collaborate. So um, we uh, collaborate with different universities, uh, but because their requirements are very different, therefore um, the collaboration uh, style needs to be negotiated. Uh, between universities and also between individuals. So um, right now, uh, I have no uh, corroboration uh, from any scholars from uh, Elanga University. Um, but I welcome all of you to contact us and then we can set up research proposal and try to uh, do together. Um, so that uh, the key factors to accept a collaboration, customer orientation means um, depend on the uh, requirement of the partner university. Uh, for example, right now we uh, uh, collaborate with a few university in Vietnam and each university, they are different. There are different requirements, so we need to consider the, the requirement. And I also consider the long-term uh, relations. Um, we need to have a very good uh, key, co key personal contact, uh, for example, with the Dean of International Office or the Vice President and President to keep the long-term uh, process, and if the commitment commitment from the uh, president, then they will uh, send a student to us. Uh, for example, one uh, university called Tong Tu Tang University, they send regularly three uh, lectures to our university, and then every year they send like this. So um, we will then regularly train them to uh, 
the coursework and also the research and also uh, teaching so that uh, they may go back three years later or four years later they become they get in a phd and become a very important people in the university uh, something like that so uh, so-called win-win strategy means um, the strategy should be a benefit to the partner university and also at the same time a, part, a benefit to our university so that the uh, relation can uh, take as a long, long term. So um, during, the, uh, during the collaboration, we try to discuss after discussion that uh, something needs to be improved. Uh, for example, um, uh, some students need to go back by after they take the course in two years because the university required that after after you you take all the coursework you need to go back to university to teach then we also design uh, such kind of uh, uh, option that student will be here for two years and after that their uh, their, their uh, thesis will be done afterwards and then uh, we need to go there to supervise uh, the periodically uh, about the progress of the thesis uh, uh, so that um, the student may not come back by themselves uh, something like this so that the student will feel very comfortable that after they go back uh, still some professor are watching their progress and can be contact uh, face by uh, face to face so continuous improvement is also important that uh, the, the, the program start and then we see the program uh, such kind of PDCA means that something uh, needs to be improved and then we try to, to uh, improve. So this is uh, what we are now doing with some universities uh, in, in, in this situation. I want to uh, give you an example. Uh, right now, we got uh, the scholarship from uh, the government uh, uh, to take uh, our PhD program. Uh, the scholarship uh, is about $800 uh, per month for three years. So three years, maybe the student get this scholarship, they are uh, already possible to get a PhD degree or nearly the end of the program. But the requirement is that students should be currently the lecturer of one of the one of uh, one of the university in Asia or in South Asia, for example from India or from Sri Lanka also uh, include. So right now at, at this program, uh, every year we have uh, three candidates. Uh, sometimes we have two candidates uh, to offer to uh, lecturers in, uh, any in any country and also in any uh, universities. So this seems to be good. If a student have such scholarship, they, are, uh, they can survive here and they can, uh, without, uh, no need to, to, to worry about their living costs, uh, dormitory costs, and also tuitions. Because the total money is about 8,000 US dollars, per, uh, I mean about 10,000 US dollars per year. And then they are very comfortable to do this. So I would like to uh, ask uh, some of the lecturer uh, from Elanga to work with me that we will offer you uh, this uh, kind of scholarship. And then uh, this is a, a PhD course schedule. Uh, the PhD, uh, the slide is very, uh, very too, too, too small. And then PhD will need to take a uh, totally 41 uh, credit hours. And among them, uh, about uh, 
14 is the required course. And then 27 will be uh, the elective course. And then elective course will include uh, three uh, methodology course and uh, six, uh, 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 six uh, major course. And one major and two, one mi minor, something like that. And I think this one is uh, quite similar to Qingdong University or Chinese Council University that we already practice. So students, after they take the, uh, the uh, coursework in about two years, uh, some students only take one and a half years, then they go back. And then they will start their thesis uh, at home. And this also applies to some of our Vietnamese students. So um, as my experience, uh, for example, with Dr. Nandia and also Dr. Ovin, the, the training process is very long and should be have intensive. Uh, I, th I think Dr. Iman also well known that the training, the mentoring process should be a very close training. Uh, therefore, um, especially for example, the student try to learn a lot, but they uh, cannot write down the first page for such a long time. So in the beginning, the student must practice and practice and, and know how to write and how to, uh, how to uh, show the innovative point and then how to submit, how to defend reviewer comments. And this is very important that reviewer has a lot of comments but their comment may, may not be very uh, uh, reasonable. But how to demand, how to defend is very important. Uh, for my experience, uh, the student to be successful, it is required that we always have very uh, good, uh, warm support, big support that if the student have question, we can respond very fast. And then, uh, if students do not know how to do, then in the first place, we need to do for them. For example, students do not know how to write the first page, means uh, abstract, then we need to write for them. So gradually, the student will try to work by themselves. So the, 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 the publication, I think most important is that the student know about the knowledge, but do not know how to write and do not know how to defend to the reviewers. And then if you try one time, two times, and every time fail without the supervision of the professor, then some student will give up, say uh, no need to pursue PhD or no need to publish. But when a student are uh, trained for five years. For example, Dr. Nadia, when she leave me, I seem to be very sad because she know everything already. But suddenly she's leaving and then I need to train another student. The process is almost the same from all the knowledge my expertise, my concept, and my publications. And after that, the writing of the first paper, the beginning is so difficult. And until they, fi they write five or six papers, they know how to do, and I only say a few words, they already done everything. So when they left me, I feel very bad. Every time the PhD student left me, I say, how come they need to leave? They had better stay with me so that I only speak, no need to work again. But uh, then the professor will try to train a new student from the beginning. And such training, uh, for example, uh, we have such a long time um, collaboration 
Um, for example, I have collaborated with Dr. Padli, Dr. Nadia, and also Professor Iman also. Um, in addition to a few of, a few of regret, uh, we will feel very, uh, a kind of very, uh, the feeling is so good that the student become a uh, growth and, and, and performance better than the professors. And this uh, is a kind of achievement of the professors to work with the students. Uh, so why the professor always try to teach from the beginning, because the professor know that one day this student will become very potential creators. They will create very innovative papers and very innovative scholars. So um, I have been supervised for about 50 PhD students and more than 300 master students. And every time like this to start from the beginning and then to be a little bit sad by the end. So, and, and the, the process is continuing. I think uh, Nadia is laughing. I, I know she's also feeling like this. And also um, for, for some uh, PhD, uh, some scholars, if uh, you are willing to collaborate with us, we will offer uh, uh, by camp, because Elanga already have an MOU with uh, Nanhua. So we can uh, do a kind of um, exchange uh, so that the exchange student will come to my office and we will provide office, libraries, resources. And then Nanhua is very a uh, countryside university. It's very different from University of Elanga, you are in the downtown. So students come here, should come down, try to study and try to write papers. And my recommendation is that students will try to uh, join our PhD coursework, one or two course, and then make a co communication with other PhD students uh, to uh, create more creative ideas. And then as, as a, a social media, that means try to corroborate with a, a potential uh, uh, PhD student. Uh, I will say that um, depends on the concentration or the, the effort of the student, maybe uh, one or two papers will uh, submit in one semester before they go back to, to the uh, uh, home university. Uh, this one, I know, I think, I, I just especially take the Dr. Offin as an example. I, actually, Dr. Nadia also. And then, um, as I say, I always in administration work. So I assign the student to become my TA and my as, as, research assistants. And in, in many times, they also become teacher because after they take a, a lecture in the university, I assign them to teach our uh, international students. And I think in the beginning, they also, also teach not so good, but gradually they learn and learn about teaching. I think that training of teaching is also important because once the student go back to their university, they are teaching in the first time. So before they go, they had better learn in this university. And because I'm the, in the administration, so normally I get more uh, research uh, grant. So for example, Dr. Nadia and Dr. Ofin also are member of the team for the research uh, team uh, about the uh, government uh, project. And after that, then, I, as I say, training of how to publish is a, is a lot, a lot of work. In the beginning, both students, Nadia and often English not very good. And grandma always make mistake. And then after that, I try to uh, 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 say 
this should be very careful, then they change very fast. And then now both, uh, both professors become my partner who still uh, publish. So uh, teacher assistants and also research assistants and train her means to train uh, often to be capable of teaching train her to do research, train her to have better English, writing and speaking. And then, of course, for the full program, we also provide uh, some grant so that the student not worry about their uh, living costs. And then uh, also introduce uh, some uh, research grant in Taiwan, train to, be, to do research properly train her to publish articles as a program requirements. Again, I, I think Dr. Iman also mentioned that we need to study the uh, content of the journal papers. For example, I want to submit a, a, a paper to Journal of Marketing. I need to read the paper of this journal uh, before uh, and, and learn carefully so that uh, my article well, then related to their concern. And then uh, it can be uh, published more easily. So Dr. Alvin is now publishing uh, five papers already and still some paper. Uh, I think this is our, our scopus, our I papers, uh, SSCI papers. And she's still uh, work with me. Uh, as a as a normal practice of my student, uh, they normally uh, corroborate with me uh, ten years after before they uh, after they graduate about ten years they still work with with me. But the professor will then start uh, his or her own directions to do another research, and then uh, the professor will also do some research with their students. So there are three directions. One is after uh, the professor get a PhD, one is to do continue with uh, his or her professor. One is to do a very excellent paper by himself or herself. And one is to do some research paper uh, with the students. Uh, in this case, uh, we need to uh, try to see that quality and quantity will be balanced. Some professor, they are emphasize so much on uh, qu quality that sometime in five years, you only publish one paper. Uh, it seems to be uh, too much uh, focus on quality. But on the other hand, you can try to uh, such a balance. That means the quality and quantity can also be achieved. And, and this one is uh, the, for the past three years, we have recruited so many uh, students uh, from different, many from Vietnam, but also some students from Malaysia and also Mongolia and also Bangladesh and India. They all come to me like this and some of them are um, introduced by, for example, TDTU means recommend by TDTU in Vietnam. And some students um, are recruit. And they all um, become my students and they all go through the same process as Nadia come to me in the first day, the first year, second year, something like that. Uh, as an example, this one, these are people, uh, uh, fun come from uh, a foreign trade university. And I offer him uh, 10,000 US dollars per year for three years. Now uh, he's still not done, but he go back to Vietnam to write thesis. Because also waiting for SSCI pub to be published. And he's a lecturer. And this one, Tracy, also another, uh, also, uh, 
two years and she married and she got baby, baby, and then she go back. And then now also uh, right thesis. This one is still uh, on my office and uh, she also published very good. Now already get one SSCI paper accept. And this one, uh, he, he come from uh, Uni uh, Commerce University in Vietnam. He also a lecturer. So I offer him already two years, uh, 10,000 US dollars. And then he already get uh, SSCI accept. And suddenly he decided to bring his wife and, and kids and, and son to study here. So he will study uh, a few more years. So this, uh, these few cases are a very good example of a student who uh, um, offered the uh, Taiwan scholarship for 10,000 US dollars per year so that they can survive. Uh, seems to be good. And this is the uh, student uh, come from TDTU. Uh, I didn't offer all of them, um, all of them um, scholarship, only tuition wave and no, no uh, living cost. But they're still uh, working here and then uh, still uh, good. Uh, and almost of, all of them uh, are fulfill the requirements. And then um, uh, I think this is a good way to train in. And then I also invite again any faculty members, lecturers uh, come here to, to our uh, PhD program, especially in college of management to get a degree and to get a training uh, to uh, become a very good uh, scholar. Uh, therefore, as a conclusion, uh, again, we invite scholar from the Ranga University. We will try to design proposal to fulfill the needs of the scholar. And number two, uh, the training progress is, the training process usually is very long and very difficult, especially try to publish is always difficult. So students need a lot of training. Uh, if the student can stay three years, it's much better than stay two years. Because in the first two years, they normally uh, take the course. Uh, starting from the third year, they start writing. So be, be confident and be ambitious as Chinese as I always say, gathering the sand into a tower and get experience from action. So this comes to uh, my conclusion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Wu, for sharing your experience to us. As what can I conclude from your speech is that it's almost the same with what Dr. Iman mentioned that we need to find a mentor, but you as a professor, professor are mentors, while students are potential creators. So those participants that you are currently study PhD or master, maybe you still have some potential to improve your research capability. And maybe if you want to ask, you can write it down in the chat, because now we will go to the question and answer sessions. We have got several questions actually, but wait, let me summarize for a while here. Okay. Share my screen. Dr. Nadia, you should ask first question. <laughs> me? Okay, maybe I will Otherwise. ask you last questions, not the first <laughs> questions. <laughs> Okay. The, actually, oh, the I'm questions you can direct it to both oh. the speakers. So for the first questions, this is from Mr. Irawan from Palankara, Palanka University. It, this question is directed to Dr. Iman. How the strategy to looking for the researchers for research collaboration? 
Yeah, thank you, Dr. Nadia. Can you hear my voice, Nadia? Yes, yes, sure. Okay, yeah, first of all, I would like to comment to the Professor Wu presentation is, uh, this is when we learn from a good mentor, we got a lot of wisdom. Thank you, Professor Wu, for the nice presentation. Yeah, and uh, how the strategy they're looking for that. Yeah, okay. But uh, if you graduate from the university, Hello, Dr. Iman. Hello, it's a lost connection, ma'am. Lost connection. Okay. Yes. Dr. Iman lost connection. Yes, it seems. I, I, yeah, I yeah. Dr. Okay. Iman lost connection. Maybe while waiting for him to return to Zoom, maybe we can. Uh, maybe I will answer first. That. Okay, okay, um, you can. Answer. Uh, very Dr. Iman uh, already like here. Research, I think. Okay, 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 Dr. Iman first. Uh, sorry, Dr. Iman. I... Hello? Hello, is he yeah, in? Yeah, hello. Sorry. Uh, sorry, because I yeah. think you just lost connection. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Again, you. Again, yeah, the, that's, a con that's a conventional way uh, for, I mean, for us to find the research uh, collaborators attending the conference yeah but again you need we need to understand or we need to learn about their profile first before we decide to work yeah such as looking at the background looking at the research profile and the second thing uh, now but now is the the approach is more uh, advanced i mean uh, the barrier between uh, one researcher to another uh, researcher become less and less now you can use the um, maybe the uh, email or the social media platform like ResearchGate, you can drop your ideas over there and you can ask anyone to comment. Yeah, I, I think that's a, also a good way to start the collaborations. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe that's okay. the answer. Thank you, Dr. Iman, for that answer. Uh, Professor Wu, I think you mentioned that you want to answer the question also. Okay. Yeah, and I. I saw that uh, Dr. Iman may be uh, out of connection, therefore I try to answer, but I think Dr. Iman answered very good. But for my experience, um, uh, maybe in the first place, try to collaborate with your pro professor. Um, for example, you, you, if you are going to exchange, and you go back to your professor university and try to start the first collaboration will be better. For me, I joined a conference. And then, uh, for example, I after I graduated from my PhD, I uh, come back to Taiwan, but I still joined the uh, international conference of marketing every year. So I listened carefully uh, about the presentation of their papers. And then, then I know someone that I need to uh, corroborate. Uh, for example, in one time I joined a conference in Florida. And then I suddenly find a paper that is very similar to me. Then I do a corroboration with one professor in Kobe University in Japan, uh, who I never know him. I only uh, they see his presentation. And after that, I feel that uh, I can do a connection with him. And then uh, we do a first connection. But after that, and he invite another professor from uh, Osaka University. That is another university nearby, very nearby. O Kobe to Osaka is many, I think one hour in distance. And then I then corroborate with the Osaka University professor a lot, but I didn't uh, corroborate with Kobe University anymore. So, so uh, we uh, try to corroborate and after that to see it is okay or not, and then maybe some other connection will, will be happen, something like that. So go to conference and try to find some potential collaborator is also one of the 
other way to uh, see uh, collaborations. Okay, thank you, Professor Wu and Iman also. And uh, sorry, uh, may I add some questions? Maybe because uh, the characteristic of Indonesian people is quite shy, right? To approaching, uh, especially for example, if we see that they are the professors and high profile. How you approach to high profile professor, Dr. Iman, in your experience? I mean, usually we are like. Uh, I'm very sorry. I'm not that capable enough to talk with them. <laughs> I think most of Indonesian people are that have that kind of characteristics. So how will to overcome yeah. that kind of? Thing? Yeah, I think uh, not only uh, Indonesia. Yeah, uh, yeah. we have a Eastern typical culture. Yeah, uh, okay. but I think um, I started to be more confident when I went to uh, NCKU. I learned a lot when I was in NCKU. Because at that time, um, I interact with some uh, many people from overseas, yeah. And at that time, I realized that uh, my supervisor and also Prof Wu always um, encourage us to, uh, I mean, to maximize or to optimizing our performance. And um, at the end, I realized that everyone has a unique uh, ability, yeah, which uh, maybe others don't have that one. So. Um, based on that point of view, I always start to, uh, I mean, uh, I have, uh, what is that? I always try to contact anyone, uh, everyone or someone if I have a problem, but I need to make sure that I don't waste that, their time. Yeah. So if we have, uh, I mean, if we prepare, uh, the things that we want to discuss with someone, they mostly they, they are very welcome yeah uh, i i remember when i met with john nolan john nolan was the visiting professor at the ncku at that time uh, yeah i think in uh, it was in 2008 yeah uh, dr john nolan was a visiting professor at ncku in the accounting department at that time uh, i i directly approached him I sent email to him that I'm, I'm. Uh, I said that I'm an CKU student and I'm from Indonesia. I'm interested to discuss with you. Would you want to uh, have some time to discuss with me? Yeah, uh, I I never expect that he will reply because he 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 didn't know me at that time. But uh, um, luckily uh, he uh, replied my email and we have a good time to discuss uh, during the time in Taiwan in Tainan at that time. Uh, starting from that, I always, uh, if I have a problem, if I have, if I think someone else can help me on solving any problem, I'm trying to be polite to contact him and if asking if he would like to uh, help. Yeah. So, so far, I think uh, I also have one bad experience. Yeah. I, at, at the time I apply, I think I was applying to uh, apply GSPS. GSPS is like a Japanese postdoctoral programs. Yeah, I didn't prepare uh, the application very well, and I got complaint from the supervisor as well. But at that time, uh, I I took that part as the learning process, and I think everyone has the same opportunity. Everyone has the same uh, potential. Yeah, so uh, be confident, and you can. Uh, started politely, and I think everyone needs collaborations. That's my answer, Dr. Nadia. Okay, thank you, Dr. Iman. So, okay, let's go further to question number two. This is from Muhammad Bal Ramadan from Universitas Erlangga, and this question is directed to Professor Wu. Do you think the increase of political tension between Chinese mainland and Taiwan and U.S. will be affecting the collaboration and future research in Taiwan. <laughs> I think this topic is a little bit quite sensitive for specialists. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Now Taiwan uh, try to ask U.S. help to do something against mainland. Mm -hmm. But this this issue is due to that uh, the conflict between U.S. and mainland China. Therefore the U.S. Then, uh, then try to collaborate with Taiwan. When, when, when Chinese is very good friend of U.S., Taiwan actually 
the U.S. do not uh, treat Taiwan very, very well. Therefore, um, but the political tension is always there. Our judgment is like this. Uh, the mainland will not fight Taiwan unless Taiwan do something very wrong. Mm. That means the war will be started by ta from Taiwan. Mm. But how big is the fight will be decided by China. Uh, and this will be in influenced because of the conflict between China and US. So maybe, uh, for example, you in Indonesia is very, uh, seems to be, uh, see this issue very, very nerves and very dangerous in Taiwan. However, um, we as a citizen in Taiwan, we seems to be say, don't worry, not so, not so tension. So, um, but everything is very um, unpredictable, unpredictable. And this unpredictable issue is normally uh, due to other reasons. For example, now the conflict between US and China in South China Sea, there's some of the islands nearby Philippines and Vietnam, and also about the authority. So um, maybe other conflict will cause Taiwan into dangerous, we, we believe. But still, um, nobody can predict. Therefore, we just say, if you cannot predict something, you had better uh, remain calm and let it be, something like that. So this question is very unrelated to cooperation. Maybe you also uh, talk about due to political risk, will influence future research cooperation. I think, uh, no, don't worry, it will be fine. And okay. then um, we firmly be believe that there is no fight between Taiwan and China. Okay, thank you, Professor. <laughs> thank you for answering yeah. this. Yeah. Can I add a bit? I, I don't yeah, yeah. I don't want to answer this one, but I, I just want to say that Taiwan is very very nice to uh, what is that a place to learn? Yeah, I mean mm -hmm. to study. Uh, I mean, uh, it's not that uh, busy like Hong Kong. Yeah, we have a very um, many heritage place in Taiwan, and if you travel you can enjoy the uh what is that the scenery many things yeah i recommend uh, everyone who's participate today to uh, i mean to uh to join uh if there's any opportunity uh to go to taiwan yeah okay Thanks, thank yeah. you Iman. okay let's go further to the third questions uh before i would like to say sorry i think my laptop's camera is not that well that's why you cannot see my face right i'm sorry so just continue this one and from the question three is from sanju kumar singh from universitas Erlanga. this question is directed to dr iman you mentioned about unique data set could you elaborate some unique data set that you can use for publication Thank you. okay yeah um, i think every country has the uniqueness yeah one of my dissertation is about military connections because uh, poly, uh, political uh, decision of Indonesia at that time, it was uh, highly influenced by military personnel. Yeah. So uh, given that situation, I, I, I look at that. I think if I compare to other countries, there's no uh, single countries that uh, already explore about the, how military affect the decision on business. Yeah. So, so I use that uniqueness to uh, to positioning my research here, yeah, to positioning my research in the international readers. So I explain a little bit in detail about how this the military situation and political situation in Indonesia and how it's affect the accounting decision of the company's accounting outcomes, etc. Yeah, and um, we have a lot of things that we can uh introduced to the uh, world yeah i mean from indonesia if you look at the like uh the dana desa of the uh the decision of the uh, the policy of indonesia government uh to support the business in indonesia that's also a very a unique approach compared to another countries yeah if you use the taiwan data 
Taiwan has the more, com- I mean, the most. Com- yes, for well, example, the financial data for Taiwan listing company. They are available. That means that uh, yeah. we can use Taiwan, for example, for listing company financial data for publishing, no problem. Mm-hmm. And also some data set, for example, Asian, Asian data, Asian uh, uh, company data also available. And many universities buy such kind of data set to do the publication. Mm-hmm. In the United States, also similar, some data that yeah. can be yeah, that's, uh, can be used. Yeah, sorry, Dr. Iman, because your voice suddenly disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, if you my can continue, yeah, yeah, you can continue. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you, Professor Wu, already at the. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we can uh, we can highlight what is the uniqueness of our data. Yeah, that's the important things. Many researchers, they have the unique data, but they don't know how to highlight their uniqueness of the data. That's also an uh, important ability that uh, every researcher, I think, have, uh, we have less time to contemplate what we have read and what, what is the setting, the unique setting of the research. I think that's also important. We can... Uh, I mean, we need to learn about the culture, how to, I mean, how to be positioning our data. That's Dr. Nadia, my answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Iman. Let's go further to the fourth questions. Okay, this question is from Agnes Aurora Angelo from Universitas Erlanga, and it's directed to Professor Wu. How did you overcome the obstacle when conducting research collaboration, especially collab with international researchers. And so she think that it must not be easy. Do you have any good tips for us to keep up smooth process of research with international researchers? So. Hey, for this question, I think uh, is often is often online. Often? often, do you see the question? Okay, let's Can you see. ask often to answer? <laughs> so, <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you uh, overcome your obstacle when you come to Taiwan in the first week? <laughs> okay, Dr. Alvin, maybe you can say something. Yeah, so, Alvin, say something first. <laughs> mm. uh, how, what, what should ah, I say? You, <laughs> you need to sing. Maybe your experience when collapsed. Or uh, well, I think make a good relationship with your professor is very important, and we do keep contact each other through uh, many programs. For example, we we are now working together with actually I keep contact with the assistant of him of Professor Wu, and we do some research. Mm, well. We divide our work. I mean, when they receive the reviewer comment or something, then I will do my part. He will do uh, his part, and we try to um, check each other and make it better and ready to submit the reviewer comment, something like that. And uh, what what else? <laughs> I don't know. Why you ask me, yes. sir? Why? <laughs> yes, okay, okay. I, uh, <laughs> because when I go to a Chinese university in the first semester, and suddenly this uh, Dr. Owen and Dr. Nadia come to me, and other uh, other students, I think six or seven students come to me yeah. on the second semester. And then at the time, for example, when Dr. Iman report to Chen Gong University, there are a lot of uh, other students senior student that can, can answer everything, right? Mm. But the Dr. Owen, at the time, they are the new student, and no senior student at all, because I'm also the new president. <laughs> yes. So they need to try to overcome everything by themselves. There is no, no one to answer. Mm-hmm. And I'm also the new president. I also do not know how to answer. And that 
at the time, I think it's very, uh, very bad uh, period that uh, they don't know how to do. And the coursework is quite strict. And then, uh, and hopefully uh, many times after my uh, work, uh, I always try to recruit them to, to my office at the night time and then try to solve the problem for them as soon as possible. Not only uh, on the research, but also on some of the living situations, how to live there and how to solve the problem and so on and so forth. I think that uh, for many university now, for example, Lanhua University, we have now uh, more than 100 master and PhD students from different countries. So they already know how to do in good, how to do in well, uh, how to submit to the uh, journal. Also, they have some experience. So try to learn from the senior student first, and after that, then try to learn from the professor, something like that. Okay, thank you. Maybe Dr. Iman, you want to add something? These questions, I think it's also related to your experience. <laughs> yeah, I think already um, uh, described clearly and very complete with uh, Professor Wu, yeah. Maybe one thing that I can add is that, yeah, uh, we have a good timeline. I think uh, we, we communicate at the beginning about, or I mean, the the responsibility of each collaborators, I think that will be a good, I mean, if we initiate this uh, collaboration as the first collaborations, once we already set uh, a good collaboration, I think we know each other. But the, the, uh, the important things that we need to do at the beginning is that to define the, uh, disclose about responsibility. Yeah. So we know, um, I mean, we don't need to wait each other and we, we can remind if, uh, I mean, if, Mm -hmm. Remind them as well. Yeah, that's the that's the important thing that we need to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Iman. So I think there are several more questions in the chat. Sorry, I saw that some participants are raised their hand. Maybe if you need to ask something, can you, you can write it down in the chat box. Okay. So let's take let's take a look to other questions from the chat. Uh, give me some time to see this one. Okay, the next question is from Musa Rupa from University of Jambi. The question is directed to both of the speakers. Can you explain key factor to accept a collaboration for individual in Taiwan and Indonesia? I mean, the key factors that can be accepted to have collaboration. What factors? Now go to me or what? Yeah, maybe you can answer first, Professor Wu. Um, I think that this is very dependent upon a lot of situations. Um, for example, one of the situations is that, uh, for example, I need one student, but there are 100 students to apply. And then the candidate become very competitive, right? Yes. But the other one is also based on network. For example, uh, some for example, uh, let's say uh, Dr. Iman recommended recommend to me that this student is very potential and something like that. And we will have very, very uh, favorable uh, consider due to the recommendation of our partners. And then uh, the other one is the um, content of the uh, proposal. That means, um, for example, I'm very, uh, seem to be very expertise on marketing activities, marketing theories, but I'm not, not very good on finance or operation research. So uh, if the topic is not uh, very familiar with me, then I will try to deny. So because I feel that if this topic come to me, I may not uh, do a good job. So these are uh, some of the factors that will influence the acceptance of the collaboration. Okay, thank you, Professor Wu. And how about yeah. Dr. Iman? Do you want to add something? Yeah, I think uh, at professor level can answer these questions. 
Ito yun. Yung mga professor also here. So, yun. Answer the question. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, uh, by, I think it's, uh, uh, um, it's not that only, it's about trust, I think, yeah. I think one, it's about trust that, that uh, Professor Wu mentioned about, yeah. I think the challenge is that if we set up individual collaborations, yeah, we need to have a trust, yeah. And our portfolio is a uh, signal, give a signal about our ability on, and also uh, 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 for the trust as well. And I think it, uh, Professor Wu uh, have uh, teach us a lot of things on how to increase the size of the collaboration from the individual individual to universe mm -hmm. power of networking as well and again it's about trust yeah if we i think if we have a good uh, step because uh, i think with nanhua uh, erlanga has uh, a good collaboration with uh, with which basically uh, built uh, through ncku at the first time and and I think uh, Indonesian government and Taiwan government also have a good uh, relations. Uh, we I think uh, Taiwan government provide a lot of scholarship as well for Indonesian lecturers. That's a good uh, a good uh, because uh, we can see that uh, not many countries have this. Uh, what is that? The uh, quality of networking. Yeah, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, if the question is about how uh, the key factors, I think we are Indonesian University. We need to use uh, this opportunity and prepare for, uh, I mean, uh, to uh, join for the invitation from the university in Taiwan. Yeah, that's, uh, we need to prepare ourselves before we enter the uh, invitation for collaborations. Yeah. Okay. That's Thank my you. additional. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Iman. And related to these questions, I saw the questions from Ethica Indonesian Banking School. Maybe this, uh, how to apply the postgraduate program and research interest is sustainability performance and this governance. Do you have any suggestion, particularly related to the funding duration and then also called COVID period? This one is Professor Wu. How to apply for postgraduate? Or maybe this information, if you cannot answer right now because we still have only five minutes left. Also, maybe you can explain it brief. Postgraduate. Hello. Also. I seems do not follow you. Uh, you speak too fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. What is the, uh, what is the problem? Postgraduate <laughs> program. Do you have any postgraduate program? Yes. And then? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how to apply to this postgraduate program? Oh, it's okay. okay. The funding will, and then I will the send. A, I will send a, a link. Okay, the link. Maybe this uh, to, information will. Maybe to often and often then transfer to uh, someone. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, Mrs. Etika, maybe later this. Can I ask to Prof. Bu? Yeah, yes. yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Prof, <laughs> thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, I think um, after, uh, I mean, we have a lot of uh, faculty member already graduate from their PhD program. Actually, yes. uh, we need uh, we need some time. I mean, we need some effort to adjust with the situation, research culture in Indonesia. And one way to bridge that one also through the postdoctoral programs. Uh, Prof. postdoctoral programs. I think that's also a good opportunity for young scholars to have, uh, I mean, to strengthen yeah, their culture or to tighten their uh, uh, research culture and also to expand the networking. How is the possibility uh, with Nanhua for that one, that programs? Yes, um, I think you're talking about postdoc, right? Yes. Yes, postdoctoral. Okay, so right now we do not. Uh, Establish this quite well. So, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Zhang Shao Ji, right? Yeah. In NCKU, maybe Zhang Shao Ji is more um, resources to recruit. But, oh, and also, um, considered, uh, I'm considering that the Department of Accounting 
maybe more related to finance and account accounting. Mm -hmm. So if you um, contact Zhang uh, Shaoji, will be good. Zhang Shaoji is also my good friend. Yeah. So <laughs> we can uh, do. But now in this college, maybe for example, marketing or strategy or management science will be much better. Mm -hmm. the, the finance is uh, not okay. uh, as good as Qingkong uh, University. I see. So for some of the students, for some of the scholars, uh, take a uh, uh, postdoc, I recommend to go to NCKU. So okay. if, if the student have some plan to go, then I, we can do some arrangement. But I still recommend to go to NCKU. Thank you. You, you know, the, the, uh, let me so one more minute. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Iman has been studying in NCKU and also in uh, CCU in Hong Kong, right? So the culture of uh, the culture of uh, the culture of Hong Kong uh, universities are more aggressive and they are no more looking for uh, the, the base paper. That means their idea is that quality is number one. Quantity not so important because if you publish, let's say you publish 10 papers in the second tier or third tier, as far as no, they don't uh, care about this. <laughs> especially publish in scoopers, they don't care, they don't interest in. They only uh, want to publish in first year. Mm -hmm. However, first year is so difficult for uh, new students. And Dr. Iman is very outstanding that you can publish in the first time. But for many people, therefore in Chenggong University, we only ask that, okay, SCI paper is enough or Q1, Q2 is enough. And then we don't ask so strict as Hong Kong, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So Hong Kong culture is different from uh, our our culture. Is say that okay, starting from Q3, Q4, and learn a lot, learn how to write, learn how learn how to submit, and now learn, learn how to publish, and then gradually go to number one. But Hong Kong people say no need. <laughs> if you don't go to number one, you cannot survive. So you had better go to number one in the first time. And this is a difference. And then I don't know what is that this advantage and advantage of the culture. But Hong Kong seems to be very strict and performs very good. As you say, uh, Hong Kong CCU now rank about number 15, right? Yeah, 48. They're rank, the... ranking very good now. Yeah. Uh, just for your reference about uh, the culture of research. Okay, thank you, Professor. I think the uh, time is already 11 a.m. So maybe before we close this webinar, I'm sorry for the other questions that cannot be discussed today. Maybe next time if we have another webinar. So before close this webinar, can you give some closing remarks from each speakers? Maybe starting from Dr. Iman about this research collaboration. Thank you, Dr. Nadia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, trust is important in collaborations, yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, we can learn about the uh, professionalism for our mentor from Prof Wu, from another professor. By looking at your uh, their, per, uh, their portfolio, I think we can uh, get some insight on how uh, to become a trustable person in the research uh, industry, uh, research area, uh, yeah. So uh, I think uh, um, not only preparing the technical part, but we also need to have a good manner uh, in order to have sustainable collaborations. Thank you, Dr. Nadia. Okay, thank you, Dr. Iman. So trust is important. Okay, Professor Wu, maybe you can say um, remarks. I. Um, First of all, uh, after the graduation of Dr. Bali by the year of 19, uh, 2008, I nearly visit uh, Erlanga every year to see so much good, uh, progress uh, in terms of research and ranking and so on and so forth. And now I heard so many uh, faculty members are 
try to do research, do high quality research. I just very respect all of you to have such a significant uh, progress. If we looking back on the year of 2007 or 2008, I think Elanga has no atmosphere and no culture of our research. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, seems many people are required or they are interested to do research. And this is very good because uh, we say, if you have high motivation to do, then finally you will get a way to do. Yeah. Therefore, uh, to learn uh, from Dr. Iman and to do uh, like a, a learning process, I'm sure that you were all uh, very good uh, step by step and doing more progress. I respect all of you and thank you for giving me opportunity to share my experience. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Wu. And I think that's all for this webinar. And if you are currently doing a research, just go ahead, keep up the good work. Okay, thank you. That's for me. Good, almost noon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Maybe I can go to Sina as a MC. Okay, thank you. Okay, wait for a while, Lauter. <laughs> okay, goodbye. <laughs> okay, this Sina. Uh, sorry, Ms. Vina, can you uh -huh. unmute your microphone first? Thank okay. You. Sorry, <laughs> technical problems. Okay, thank you, Professor Wu, Mr. Iman, and Mrs. Nadia for the very inspiring seminar. It certainly gives us more insight about how do international research collaborations work and the research itself. As a token of gratitude, our department would like to give an a certificate for each of our speakers and moderator. Firstly, we would like to say thank you to Mrs. Nadia Anido PhD for joining us as a moderator on today's webinar. Maybe for the operator can share screen the Yesatuna. Secondly, thank you, Mr. Professor Wen Yi Hu or Professor Wu, PhD, for collaborating and sharing the knowledge as our speaker on today's webinar. Here's our token of gratitude. Last but not least, thank you, Mr. Iman Halimawan, PhD, for giving us more insight about research as our speaker on today's webinar. Here's a token of our gratitude for your time today. Once more, please give applause for our amazing speakers and moderator for all of the knowledge that they have shared today. For all the participants, please check out the form on the link which we have provided in the chat column. And we want to announce there will be more of Accounting Department's webinar series. For further information, please check our department Instagram at aks1.unaer and our Telegram room chat uh, that the link has been sent to the Zoom chat room. Ladies and gentlemen, we, know, we now come to the end of this event, the Accounting Department's International Webinar Series. On behalf of the host and committee and me myself as the MC for today's event, we would like to extend our deepest appreciation to all of you for your support and participation. We wish to always be, ha be happy, be healthy, and safe. Once again, thank you. Good afternoon and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.